The dominant weapon in land warfare since the Second World War has been the tank. Today, guided anti-tank missiles are the most serious challenge to tanks on the modern battlefield. Their shaped charge warheads can bore through nearly a foot of steel armor. If they hit the tank's vulnerable ammunition, as we see here during a test firing, the results are catastrophic. Most contemporary anti-tank missiles use wire guidance. When the missile is fired, a thin wire, hardly thicker than a human hair, is spooled out behind it. The launch station automatically tracks the missile, the missile gunner keeps the launcher pointed at the target, and the guidance system in the launcher sends signals to the missile through the wire, which correct its trajectory. Anti-tank missiles come in different sizes, tailored to different missions. Medium anti-tank missiles are designed for the infantry. They must be easily portable. A good example is the American Dragon anti-tank missile, which can be carried by a single infantryman. In Europe, the Euro missile Milan is the preferred anti-tank weapon for infantry. It uses a two-man crew and has an effective range of two kilometers. The Milan can also be fitted with a mirror night sight, which enables it to be used at night as well as in daylight. The success of weapons like these and their Soviet counterparts has led to improvements in tank protection. Tanks now use chobham armor or reactive armor to protect against missiles. This has led to further improvements in the missiles, like tandem warheads, which can defeat reactive armor. The Swedish Bill missile uses another approach. Rather than attack the thick frontal armor of the tank, protected with layers of advanced armor and reactive armor, the Bill instead attacks the thin roof armor. It is programmed to fly over the tank and when in the right spot, detonates its warhead downward with dramatic effect. Conditions on a possible European battlefield have led to other specialized approaches such as the new Aerospatial Eryx missile. Because of their speed, medium anti-tank missiles cannot be guided for the first few hundred meters of their flight, so they cannot be used at close ranges, such as in city fighters. This is an urban combat missile, which can be fired from enclosed spaces. It leaves with a very slow speed, and its guidance system allows it to maneuver at short ranges. The infantryman can launch it while in towns without worrying about the backblast, like the type that would come from a high-speed missile. Work is now underway in Europe and America on a new generation of medium anti-tank missiles. In the United States, the new program is codenamed Orzen, and in Europe, the program is called TRIGAT. The Euro Missile Consortium is developing the TRIGAT, and one of their senior officials describes their objectives. In our design of a third-generation medium-range missile, we sought a technical and economic balance. A medium-range infantry anti-tank missile must be produced in large numbers and must also be kept at a cost compatible with the tight budgets towards the year 2000. We are leaning towards laser beam guidance, a tandem warhead to defeat the future tank threat, especially reactive armor a launch mode for engagements at very short ranges, and a low-speed launch to permit firing from bunkers and basements for urban combat. Besides the portable medium-range missiles used by the infantry, there are also heavy, long-range anti-tank missiles. These missiles can hit with pinpoint accuracy at ranges over three miles. 
The best known of these is the American tow missile. The tow is mounted on armored vehicles and on helicopters. The combination of helicopter technology and guided missiles has created one of the tank's most deadly enemies, the attack helicopter. The tow can also be fired from armored vehicles like the M2 Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle. In Europe, the counterpart of the tow is the Euro missile HOT. As in the case of the tow, it can be fired from both armored vehicles and helicopters. The laser-guided Hellfire missile supplements wire-guided anti-tank missiles like the TOW. The Hellfire was specifically designed for use from helicopters like the US Army Apache. It is the most powerful anti-tank missile in service today and can hit targets over six miles away. The Hellfire is laser-guided. The Apache weapons operator aims a laser designator at the target and the missile homes in on laser light reflecting off the target. Future generations of heavy anti-tank missiles will not need wire or laser guidance links, but will use advanced seekers which automatically home in on the target. Another unique guidance system being developed for anti-tank missiles is fiber optic guidance. The missile trails an optical fiber which conveys the video image from the camera in the nose of the missile back to the operator. The operator can actually see the same video image of the target seen by the missile. The operator can steer the missile into the target with great precision. This will permit the development of missiles which can strike targets at much greater ranges than now possible, perhaps as far as 30 miles away. These missiles could also be used to attack low-flying helicopters. There are two such missiles in development, the FOG-M in the United States and the Polyfem in France and Germany. Another way to attack land targets is with ballistic missile artillery. The United States Army's MLRS artillery rocket system can attack concentrations of tanks and other targets using small, scatterable bomblets. The new army TACOMS has greater range and a greater payload. Future versions of MLRS and TACOMS will carry guided submunitions able to hunt out tanks with pinpoint accuracy. For a century, the traditional weapons of naval warfare have been the gun and the torpedo. But with the advent of miniature radar guidance seekers and advanced electronics, anti-ship missiles are joining the naval arsenal. Perhaps the most famous of these is the French Exocet. Weapons like the Exocet can be fired from surface ships, aircraft, or even submarines. Its American counterpart is the Harpoon. This type of anti-ship missile contains a small radar in its nose. After launch, they are programmed to skim over the sea at very low altitude so that enemy ship radars cannot detect them. Their radar seekers identify the target and steer the missile for precise impact. The sophisticated guidance in the Harpoon permits a wide range of tactics. The missile can be programmed to fly over or around obstructions like small islands. They can also be programmed to fly a false heading 